So welcome to our week 10 pre-class. It's hard to believe that uh, we only have uh, three more times together, three more Tuesdays together. So what I wanted to do is I wanted to print um, the final exam and I wanted to go ahead and give you a copy. And so in the Dropbox, um, you can access this copy and there are two different versions. Um, there are two or three different, but the one, there's an answer key version and then there's a blank one. Um, and the one we're going to look at is the final exam through 10 weeks. So by the time you finish your work um, on Saturday, you should be able to handle anything in this final exam except the things that are uh, shaded out. So what I wanted to do is just kind of go over this and um, kind of talk about what you probably need to know or what you do need to know. And this will be the actual um, final once uh, we go through all of it, uh, the blacked out por portions of it will be um, there and you can print out the uh, blank version and start studying uh, for it. So this is our, our final exam. Make sure my cursor is going. Um, and uh, it has three sections. So the charts, uh, the vocab, and then uh, translation. And so um, the first chart, first thing I'm asking you to write out is the Hebrew alphabet in order. And I would start uh, from right to left. So Aleph, Bey, Gimel, Dalt, Hey. Uh, write out uh, all of those. Uh, include the final letters, if you can remember those. Uh, and then um, I'll have this chart, the conjugation of the call perfect indicative. So all these middle things will be uh, empty. So uh, you'll have this, you'll have this, but there'll be no uh, words here. And so you need to be able to write uh, the form and then what the endings are. Uh, you don't have to do it in two different colors. I just did it so you would be able to recognize it. So. Katal, Katala, Katalta, Katalt, Katalti, Katalu, that's a common plural, Katalu, Katalten, Katalten, Katalnu. And this is, of course, um, how you translate it. So uh, you should be able to write that out. You should be able to say it and write it out. So beyond the uh, uh, final. Uh, then you need to be able to write out the conjunction of the call imperfect. So, yiktol, tiktol, tiktol, tiktoli, ektol, yiktolu, tiktolna, tiktolu, tiktolna, niktol. And then I separated the uh, subformative endings from the preformative endings. And so, when you put it all together, you get the form yiktol, etc. And, uh, Sorry about the uh, formatting mess up there. I will try to fix that. Uh, write out the Hebrew verb system. This is the overall thing. I will give you the names, um, but you'll need to be able to tell me that a call is a simple active, nifal is a simple passive, intensive, active, intensive, passive, causative, active, causative, passive, and reflexive. And you'll be you'll need to be able to write out what uh, the the way you identify it. So uh, a comet spata, um, uh, performative uh, noon with a hirik, um, eal double middle dagesh, u all double middle dagesh, he and the hirik yod between the second and third radicals, uh, hofal. Uh, uh, the comets, um, Hatuf, uh, that's not the right name, the, the O class comets, uh, and then the uh, Pata, uh, Hafal, or Hofal is how everybody says it, uh, and then the Hithpail, so performative Hith, double middle uh, radical, and the Ah Ail ending for your reflexive. So, you need to be able to fill out this part of the chart and uh, 
I, I may uh, click on this and uh, show you the empty uh, version. Um, you'll have access to it in the Dropbox and you should be able to find it easily. Um, I'll do the same thing here, but I'll block out these names. So you need to be able to write call, PL, HIFIL, HIFBIL, HOFAL, PUAL, NIFAL. Um, what we're learning <coughs> this week, excuse me, <coughs> and we'll go over this in class, is uh, masculine and feminine nouns. And uh, basically, uh, when you make uh, a feminine noun, you add something to what would be the masculine noun. So this is the word horse, um, and this is a female horse. This is a female horse of... So that's what a construct state will be. We'll learn about that on Tuesday. I'll explain it to you. Uh, if you're talking about two male horses, it's Susim. If you're talking about two female horses, it's Susathayim. So these are called dual endings. If you want to say two horses of, Suse. And if you want to say two female horses of, uh, Susthay. That's your feminine dual construct. And then uh, plural, uh, susim, two, more than two horses, plural, uh, three or more. And susoth will be your um, feminine plural. And the plural construct, uh, suse, horses of, where the horses are masculine. And susoth, where uh, feminine horses and horses of. So uh, we'll go over that. Uh, don't worry about that. But you will need to be able to do this chart by the time of the final. So you'll, you'll need to get where you can write out all these endings. So that's what the quiz will be um, for uh, this week. Um, and then write out the pronouns. So who is he and he is she. And then Haim is they, and Hain is they, uh, feminine. Ata is you, masculine, singular. And Atem is you, masculine, plural. At is you, uh, feminine, singular. And uh, Atena is you all, feminine, plural. And Anoki or Ani, two forms of I, and then Anachnu would be uh, uh, we. So you'll need to be able to write that out uh, by the final exam, which will be, you know, uh, we have th three more times uh, we'll meet. So by then you'll need to know that. Um, and we have learned all the words, um, if you include... This week we're learning um, 120 to 135. We'll go through 165 by the time the class is over. So uh, right now you should only know to 120. Um, and um, when we go through uh, Yarad uh, to go down, the Jordan River is related to this word. It goes down from the north. Uh, Anoki, that's our word I. Um, yam, uh, we may have uh, already had that word in Genesis 1. Um, and to the collections of waters he called Yamim. Uh, if not, uh, Yam Suf, uh, the Red Sea slash Reed Sea, we probably talked about that. Uh, Aish is fire. Nafal, easy, because it sounds like fall. Uh, the Nephilim are the fallen ones. Uh, Dom is the word uh, blood. My mnemonic device is Akel Dama, uh, the field of blood. Uh, the Dom in that Aramaic word, uh, I believe, is blood. So that's my mnemonic device. Uh, Makom uh, is a place. I have an absolutely stupid um, mnemonic device, uh, but if you uh, remember that old rock band, uh, Leonard uh, Skinner, uh, their plane crashed in a place in Mississippi, um, a little town called Macomb, 
and um, <laughs> I don't know why I was able to associate the place where their plane crashed with the word place. That may not help you at all, but that was my silly mnemonic device. Uh, Macomb is place. Uh, uh, Ahmad is to stand. Um, I think I just had to uh, memorize that. I don't think I had a new mnemonic device. Yalad is to bring forth. Um, Yelid is um, a baby brought forth. And most of the people who uh, learn Hebrew, they have the same mnemonic device. Uh, when a woman has a baby, she yells, and yelled is the result of having a baby. Um, I don't know. Uh, it may not <laughs> work for you, but a lot of people have that mnemonic device uh, uh, to beget or bring forth. Aharon, just the name Aaron. Uh, Ya'ekob, um, Jacob. And uh, the... The weird thing about this word is part of it looks like the word heal, um, and part of it looks like the word deceive, or at least it's similar to those. And so if you can remember those two connections, um, it may help you remember this word. Uh, pa is mouth, um, lifne, uh, be before me, um, I don't know. that. That probably isn't an actual connection, but that's my mnemonic device. Uh, uh, pay is mouth. Um, o is or. Um, I think I just had to memorize that one. Adon, uh, of course, we already know Adonai, my lords. Uh, and uh, Shamar, uh, the, um, Adam is placed in the garden to guard and keep it just like the Levites are guarding and keeping the temple. And we'll look at all that on uh, Tuesday, but uh, uh, for now, know that um, by this coming Saturday, you should be able to do all these words. So these are all the ones that we've done so far. Um, and again, we've, we're going from the most used to the least used. So uh, as you work through these, you know, make sure you get the, these down and start studying uh, for the uh, final exam by brushing up on these uh, words. And then um, we are coming to the translation and uh, this sh should say one to 19 instead of uh, one to nine. That's a mistake, sorry about that. Um, but um, what I did is I broke these up into phrases and I just put a kind of hyper literal translation. Um, when you have the final exam, and the final exam is without notes, so, so it's just you and the final exam do as much of this as you can. Um, you know, uh, I imagine you may not be able to get all, all these right. Um, you may be able to, and I, I hope you will, but do what you can, uh, but 1 to 19, I think we, before today, we did 1 to 11, um, and I think I blocked out, well, I guess through today we are doing th through the end of day 4, um, and, you know, this probably looks a little overwhelming, but realize that Genesis 1 repeats itself. So just because we're adding 10 verses uh, this week, uh, it's really not that much because most of it we've actually had before. Uh, in the beginning, Elohim created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was tohu vabohu, and Hoshek was on the face of the Tehom, the spirit of Elohim, PL of hovering was mega hovering, massively hovering on the faces of the waters. And God said, Vayomer Elohim Yehi or, let there be light, Vayehi or, and there was light, Vayar Elohim et Haor Kitov, God saw that the light was good. Um, what you may want to do is when you print this out at first, uh, get a 
an index card or something and cover up uh, this side and see if you can get these but go through uh, an Elohim uh, divided between the light and between the darkness and Elohim saw or Elohim called uh, to the light day and to the darkness he called night and there was evening and there was morning, day one. By Yomer Elohim, and God said, Yehi Rakia, let there be a Rakia uh, in the midst of the waters, and let it be a thing dividing. So that's your Hiphil Parsipal. Um, uh, let it be a thing causing a division uh, between waters to the waters. Um, I guess in English we would say between the waters and waters, but I'm trying to be hyper literal to help you uh, see the uh, prepositions here. Uh, and Elohim made the Rakia, and it caused a division between the waters and the waters, which were from underneath to the Rakia, and between the waters, which were from upon to the Rakia. So that's a little strange, but it's straight, straight up Hebrew. Um, and it was so, and Elohim called to the Rakia, and there's your comments there, that is definite, um, Shemaim. So God called the Rakia heavens, and there was evening and morning, a second day. Notice no the word there. Um, and Elohim said, you know, it's going to be 10 times uh, that phrase appears. Let the waters be gathered. Uh, that's a nifal of the word gather. It's also very similar to the word hope. Uh, I wonder if there might be a play of words there. Uh, let the waters gather from underneath of the heavens. So from under heaven to Makom, <laughs> it's our place word, isn't it? To Makom Echad, to one place. Uh, and let there appear Yabesha, let uh, dry land appear, Nifal. Um, it would have a doubling Dagesh in the first radical, but you can't double a Resh. Uh, and it was so, and God called to the Yabesha Eretz, God called to the dry land earth, and to the mikveh, you might remember that uh, that bath uh, that uh, women go through to convert to Judaism, I think it's called a mikveh, um, that, the collection of waters. Uh, to the collection of waters, uh, he called yamim, that's our word C from today's vocabulary. And Elohim saw that it was good. And Elohim said, and then this little part is weird uh, grammatically. It's a little difficult to read, but this is the way I read it. It may help you. Um, you can see this is a cognate accusative. Let the land desha adesha. We don't know exactly what that means, but let it produce... Um, edible plants or something, maybe. And then it tells us what that is. Uh, uh, herb, herbs seeding seed, a tree of fruit making fruit to its kind, which his seed is in it upon the earth. And with all these verses, when it was given, it's going to be repeated when it happens. Uh, and it was so. And the earth brought forth Desha, Esev Mazria Zera, uh, uh, herbs seeding seed to its kind, and a tree making fruit, which his seed is in it, the Yar Elohim Kitov, and God saw that it was good. By he era, by he boker, and there was evening and there was morning, Yom Shalashi. And I think this is probably the new uh, material. Vayomer Elohim. And God said, Yehi me'orot be'rakia hashemayim. And let there be uh, lights 
in the rakia of the heavens. So this is construct, and if this word has a the, then all the words in the construct chain have a the. Uh, in the rakia of heavens, to cause a division, so that's an infinitive uh, construct with the preposition le, it's a hyphial, uh, let it cause a division between the day and between the night, and let them be for signs, for seasons, for days and years, and let them be for lights in the rakia of the heavens, um, in order to give light on the earth, and it was so. You know, I probably should change that. That's probably not adjusted there. Um, and there were lights in the Rakia of the heavens to give light on the earth. No, I think it, uh, I don't know, maybe it is adjusted. The form can go either either way. Um, of course, I'll, I'll count either way you translate it. Um, and Elohim made the two great lights the uh, light, the big one, for a dominion of the day, and the light, the small one, for a dominion of the night, uh, and the stars. And that et means that the stars are the direct, definite direct object of Asa. God made these, and God made uh, the stars. So that's why I've did it this way. And Elohim uh, gave them in the Rakia of the heavens to give light upon the earth and to mashal, to have dominion over the day and over the night, and to cause a division between the light and between uh, the darkness. And God saw that it was good, and there was evening and morning a fourth day. So you need to be able to read through that. Um, uh, then I thought we had done one and two, but I've got it blacked out. So I don't guess we've done that, but we will do that. And I thought we had done one and two, but I've got that blacked out too. We, we will read through that before the final, but um, um, I've got it blacked out. So uh, probably won't do that. Uh, we do have the Shema, Shema Israel, Adonai Eloheinu, uh, Adonai Echad, Ve'ahavta, et Adonai Eloheka, uh, Bekal Levavka, U, Bekal Nafshka, U, uh, Bekal Meldeka. So you should have that down. And then, um, yeah, for some reason, when I converted this to a PDF, it blacked out all the things because I, I know we have verse 1 of this already but we'll uh, have it through verse 3 um, sorry about the typos I just did this and then uh, Psalm uh, 115 um, 1 through 3 and we've done one so far let me um, see if I can pull this up. Good. So these are the, oh wow, that's weird. Uh, these are the passages that we should have. So we're at uh, week 10, so we added 9 through 19. Uh, we've done Exodus 1 and 2. Uh, we've done Ezekiel 22 and 23, Deuteronomy 6, 5. Um, We've done Psalm 1 1, Psalm 115 1, and we've done the vocab 121 to 135. So, this is what we should have this week. So, uh, I'm going to go ahead and you, you have access to the Dropbox so you can kind of look at the final. So, the, the final we will do through this material and. Um, you're going to do a, a great job. So we'll uh, start studying together on Tuesday. We'll go over the, the actual uh, chapter 10 stuff in class. 
uh, be prepared to um, work through the readings. I think I put ACOT uh, for all the new stuff on there. Um, but wishing you uh, the best and uh, look forward to talking to you on Tuesday. Thanks.